And welcome to St. Andrew United Methodist Church. I'd like to welcome you here to worship with us on this Sunday. Whether you're here with us in the sanctuary, whether you're in the parking lot worshiping with us, or whether you will be worshiping with us on our YouTube channel at a later date, we hope that you are blessed by your time with us today. And I do have a few announcements this morning. Um, when you came in, you were given um, a copy of our bulletin, and on the back, we have a list of our saints in heaven from 2022 through 2023. And there were some names inadvertently left off of that list, and so our apologies to the families of those loved ones. I would also like to remind you that our coat drive is still going on and we are accepting coats in, um, the back, in the box in the back of the overflow. We also are having, Zondra has invited the women of St. Andrew to the parsonage at three o'clock today. And so for all of the women, um, you're invited to the parsonage. We also have charge conference today at 12 o'clock here in the sanctuary. It will be a combined charge conference with St. Andrew and Lakeview United Methodist Church. Our Christmas baskets um, are still going on. Um, they are still taking sign-ups in the office, so if you would like to sign up to adopt a Christmas basket family, whether it's your family, whether it is your small group or however you want to do that, just notify Brenda in the office and that will be put on the list. And fruitcakes. Thanksgiving will be here and if you would like to have a fruitcake for Thanksgiving, they need your order by Thursday, November 16th because they will not be making fruitcakes the week of Thanksgiving. And I don't like fruitcake. But I tasted our fruit cakes one time and I could tolerate it. So if I can tolerate it, they've got to be good. <laughs> and finally, as you came in, you should have been given a leaf along with your bulletin. And if you could just take a moment um, after the service and write down the one thing that you are thankful for this Thanksgiving season and then give it to me after the service, I would appreciate it. Thank you, and now we will turn it over to the praise band. Sing loud now. I 
Apologize. There was one other announcement that I meant to make and forgot, but it's kind of fitting that I make it now since they just sang I Saw the Light. Caden, could you and Jake stand up for a minute, please? So I was at a conference this weekend, and one of the keynote speakers was talking about the importance of our alkalites and the fact that we typically don't see them as part of our worship service but yet how important they are because when they are coming up to light the candles before worship starts, they are carrying God's light to us every, mor or every Sunday morning. So I just wanted to take a minute to acknowledge Caden and Jake and let them know how much we appreciate them. <laughs> and it's also Caden's birthday tomorrow. <laughs> and now would you please join me in the call to worship. We are pulled in many directions. This day, in this place, let service to God be your choice. Blessed be the God of creation who has called us here. Amen. And now would you please stand as you are able and join us in the opening hymn, Because He Lives, number 364 in the hymnal or on the screens, and then remain standing for the opening prayer.
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we come to you this day in your house. We are so thankful for the opportunity to be able to worship you. We are so thankful for each and every person that is here today. And God, we are thankful for the people who couldn't be here today. And on this day after Veterans Day, we're thankful for those men and women who fought to give us the freedom to be here in your house. And God, I ask that you be with each person who is here, each person who is worshiping in the parking lot and will be worshiping later. I ask that you be with those who are unable to be here with us physically or in spirit. God, I ask that you touch the hearts of each and every person, and it is in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Will the ushers please come forward for the tithes and offerings?
How is it with your soul this morning? Isn't that a beautiful song? In an announcement at uh, noon today, we have our charge conference. Uh, the other church at Lakeview will be coming over to join us. So that starts at, at 12 noon. Also, um, if your name is on the list of as an officer, if you could see me after uh, service this morning, make sure that we've got everything signed and everything. So just uh, remember that at the end of church. There's a, a piece of scripture that I have used many times at a funeral. I've used it in other occasions, but it just seems like something that could bring hope and, and uh, satisfaction in a funeral. It comes out of the book of Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at verse 13 and going clear to 48. He reads this way. Now on that same day, two of them were walking to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them what things. They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests... And leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they, <clears throat> when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe that all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was walking and talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. When they told what happened on the road and how he'd been made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. 
while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything to eat? They came, they gave him a piece of boiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me and in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer, to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The word of God to the children of God. Amen. Heavenly gracious Father, we thank you. We thank you for in inviting us here. And Father, I pray that you will put me to the side and bring the cross to the forefront. Father, we just pray this day that you will be lifted up and glorified. And Lord, that the hope that comes through your Son, Jesus Christ, may it be forever in our hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are absolutely consistent on one thing. And that one thing is that no one believes the good news of Jesus in the Scriptures. That Resurrection Sunday, when they first heard this, they didn't believe. No one believed. And that includes Jesus' own disciples. The ones who were closest to Him. The ones that spent most of the time with Him. In fact, disbelief actually starts with the disciples. Isn't that amazing? They walked three years with Him. And they still cannot grasp what's going on. Earlier in the verses, Luke tells us that the disciples rolled their eyes and dismissed the woman that were saying that who had been at the resurrected Christ, that they seen her, they seen him. And actually, it's a nice way to put it. We've seen the resurrected Christ. We've seen the resurrected Christ. The Greek word Luke uses in this is leros. It's the root version, version of delirious. That's what they thought was happening in the women's lives. That's what they were thinking. In response to the testimony of the women, the disciples thought that they were out of their minds. And testimony and testimony that it has that a person who has died has actually been raised to life, boy, that just messes up the natural order of things, doesn't it? Later in the day, on the first Easter, very first Easter, two of Jesus' disciples were walking on their way to a village called Emmaus. They were talking about everything that is passing. We are told that as they talked and discussed these things, the scripture says that Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. You know, I want to pause just for a second. Because this is a perfect picture of God's action and grace together. Even in the midst of our doubts and unbelief, Jesus comes and walks with us. Jesus comes and speaks to us. We are told that even the ability to believe is a gift of God, lest anyone should boast. And we see it right here. Not only, not only does Jesus Christ die so that through faith in Him that we can live, He even provides the faith to us to believe. I don't know how many people I've spoken to who have said to me, when was the least expecting it? When was it obviously conscious looking for it? 
How many of us are really looking, looking for Christ on a daily basis? Jesus. Jesus is walking along with the two disciples. They don't recognize him. I love this part. He walks up to these two and he says, what are you talking about? And they tell him about what happened with the arrest, the crucifixion, the, and then they say, we had hoped that he was the one that, who was going to redeem Israel. Look at that word. Look at those words. We had hoped. What are you hoping for this day? What are you hoping for? There's, a, there's so much in these three words. Some have said that these are the three most heartbreaking words in the Bible. We had hoped. And that's because they speak of the future that is not to be a dream that created energy and enthusiasm, but didn't come to pass. A promise that proved to be false. They speak of a future that is now closed off. It's irrelevant. It's dead. And there, it's hard to think of anything worse than a dead future, isn't it? We had hoped. We had hoped, the dejected disciples tell Jesus. Let me ask you this morning, what have you hoped for? And at that point, they don't, the disciples don't hope anymore. They've lost hope. How many of us have lost hope today? Cleopas and the other disciple had heard the woman proclaim that Jesus had risen and they just couldn't take it anymore because hopeful people, hopeful people do not leave town. But you know what? Jesus, Jesus stays right by their side. So Jesus says to them, did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with the Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And if we read about Moses and the prophets, we read about the hope in the most improbable circumstances. You see, Moses freeing the people from slavery, enduring 40 years in the wilderness, searching for the promised land. The entire Bible, the entire Bible points to resurrection, to reconciliation, relationships between God and human beings, to love and the light and the world to darkness and fear. And yes, all the scriptures point to Jesus. Let me assure you today, folks, He is God. This Jesus, He is love. This Jesus, He is salvation. And this Jesus is our hope. We're told that when Jesus and His disciples get to Emmaus, Jesus is just about to continue on. He's about ready to go a little further. But notice this. They urged him strongly to stay with us. They still don't know who they're talking to because their pain and sorrow is so deep. They ask him to stay with them. They ask him to share a meal. So he went in to stay with them. Now realize what I'm about to tell you is this. He went in to stay with them and that's how Jesus works for each one of us. He comes to stay with us. Once inside the house, it gets a little special in there. The meal comes out and there is Jesus. These two that are sharing the meal, they have a broken heart. Because the only thing they know is something too good to be true. They've been told that this Jesus... That, that he was crucified, they knew that part. But somebody, some crazy person said that his tomb is empty. And then it goes on and somebody says that they saw him. Now I'm going to tell you what, 
that's just too difficult. That's just too hard. That's just too amazing, isn't it? These two on this road to Emmaus, they kept saying to each other on this 11-mile walk to Emmaus, they kept saying to each other, we had thought he is the one. They had thought, thought that he was the one. Folks, let me tell you this. Jesus Christ is the one. Jesus Christ is all we will ever need in our lives. They're broken. When we're broken, we see things differently. When we're hurting, we can't understand situations. And sometimes we just get all befuzzled and messed up when things go really bad, don't they? But Jesus does something that catches their eye. And, and I really like this part because he does this on purpose. There's Jesus sitting at the table and he took the bread and he broke the bread. Now, isn't that amazing how simple that is? And when he broke the bread, all of a sudden, these two, one of, a couple of his disciples, realized that they'd been in the presence of Jesus all day. How cool is that? By the breaking of bread. And I don't think they just saw his hands. I'm telling you, they saw the scars of those hands. And in seeing those scars of those hands, they have seen the love of Jesus Christ. They have seen how valuable you, I, and this world is. He has prepared and has already given himself for us. And he is going to prepare a place for us. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I really, Zoner and I are really enjoying living here. But I'm telling you what, we're anxious to get there they see for the first time a resurrected Jesus they see his words and they don't only see his words they feel his words and whatever happens now they're going to live his words because they've seen and had a relationship with the resurrected Christ how about you how's your relationship with the resurrected Christ Go to him in prayer. Talk to him. He's alive, sitting at the right hand of the Father. And there's a day coming when God looks over Jesus and says, go get my kids, go get my children. And in a twinkling of an eye, that sky is going to open up. And I'm going to tell you, you and I are going to celebrate or either it's going to be forever too late. Can you imagine? Can you imagine looking up and seeing that sky going? I'm, I'm just, oh, it just gets me all the time. It gets me all the time because, because what this whole, what I'm trying to tell you today is this. God is with us. God will work with us. God will use us to change this town. God will use us to change people's lives. God will handle everything we need to handle. And what we as the church need to do, we just need to step out and tell everybody about our Jesus. Unless... Unless, unless maybe our faith has dropped a little bit. Unless we just don't feel like it. Unless you fill in that part. Unless. You know, let, let me give you a little thought here if I quit eating ice cream I wouldn't be so fat right now when I go to the doctor the doctor says you need to cut back on your ice cream now let me tell you what's going to happen the next time I go back to the doctor She's going to say, you need to cut back on the ice cream. Yes, ma'am. You know what's going to happen the time after that? You need to cut back on the ice cream. You know why? Because I don't quit. Once I get out of her office, 
I got six more months to eat ice cream before I see her again. Let's not treat Jesus that way. Listen to his word. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and receive you unto myself. These two guys, these two guys walk into Emmaus. They're kicking dirt. Jesus comes up and they are so heartbroken that they don't see him. They see him when he breaks the bread and they kick the dirt all the way home. But you know what? When they had that encounter of the risen Christ, when they had that encounter with the Jesus Christ that we all know, they ran 11 miles back to tell everybody that they had seen the the resurrected Christ, that Jesus is alive. And I'm telling you what, every church in this community, every church in this state, every church in this world ought to be celebrating the relationship with Christ because He is alive. Can you imagine the excitement? Can you imagine the excitement when Jesus got around the disciples? Because they all ran away and hid. These disciples ran away and, and abandoned him. But you know what Jesus was willing to do? He was willing to take them back. He was willing to let them start over. And he brought these ones that ran away and he's going to tell them, I'm going to build my church based on what you do. You think he's telling us in this church that? Do you hear that? I'm going to use you and you and you and you and you and you and all of you to build this church. It's not a building. The church is not a building. The church is the people. The church, the church is the hope of St. Albans. The church is the joy of St. Albans. The joy of St. Albans. It's never the building. It's you and I. It's you and I. So if somebody's out there calling you a Jesus freak, you need to thank them. If somebody hears you singing and praising God and they're looking at you like this, you just keep singing to them because they're getting close. You know, when they realized it was Jesus, he vanished. I always thought that was different. As soon as they figured out it was him, he vanished. And, and in my little mind, you know what I think? That moment with Jesus will last a lifetime. How about your relationship with Christ? Are you ready for a lifetime? You see, we don't retire. We Christians don't retire. When we accept Christ, when we allow Him into our hearts, we are a Christian forever. We reach out, we change lives, we touch people, we share the good news of Jesus Christ, and that never ends. Because we're the church, and we are followers of Jesus Christ. I just said this just a moment ago, but it still amazes me. These two walking to Emmaus, they're kicking dirt, their heads are down, they're broken hearted. But when you have an encounter with Jesus Christ, He will change our lives. Because when they realized they were in the presence of Jesus, they ran that whole way. Just to tell somebody that they've seen the resurrected Christ. I'm not asking you to run today. I'm not asking you to stand on top of the church and, and, and sing and share God's grace and mercy. What I am asking you today is to grab hold of your faith and share it with this community because this community needs Jesus Christ. Today, as we prepare to close,
We're going to pray leaning on the everlasting arms. Before we sing, I'd like to ask you this. Maybe you're like the two disciples. Maybe you're like one of them. Maybe your heart's broken. And maybe you don't realize that what you're going through or your family or friends, that you have Jesus close by. Maybe you received bad news last night, maybe sometime. Whatever is going in, oh, can't even talk. Whatever's going on within your life, maybe we have forgotten how close Christ really is. Because these two in Emmaus were so excited that they ran all those miles back to, to tell others the good news. So today, I offer Christ. If you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, I invite you to come and uh, accept him. If you were once on fire for Christ and drifted away, the coolest thing is you can come back and Jesus never says where you've been, what you've done. He just simply says, welcome home. Or maybe there's too many burdens in your world. And maybe today you need to come to this workbench and leave all those stuff problems, worries, concerns, all right here. Because Jesus will carry it. And when we do that, it'll set us free. It'll set us free. So if you would please, to please stand as we share in leaning on the everlasting arms.